This insane accommodation is where we spent our first night on the Salcante trek, and something tells me it gets better from here. <gasps> oh! <laughs> I want to jump on the bed so bad, but I'm so You're sweaty, sweaty. Yeah. I don't ruin it. <laughs> but to tell the full story, we have to go back to the day before yesterday. Technically, this trek starts a couple of days before you begin hiking. We arrived in the Cusco and went to check in at the Alpaca Expedition office. We got some cash out, paid the final balance for our trip, and had a welcome meeting. Leaving tomorrow, I'm going to do this uh, amazing and spectacular hike, which is Alcanta. As we were being given the rundown of what this five night experience would look like, we could hear dozens of people outside the door packing up tents and equipment. These incredible people would be our porters. We met everyone who was on the same trip as us, as well as the alpaca team who would be guiding us on the trail. After having all our questions answered, we were given a duffel bag to fill with our clothes and sent home for a restless night. Which brings me to yesterday. It is currently just after 2.30 p.m. and we are about to board a bus that's gonna take us three hours to our accommodation tonight. Energies are really high, but I think both Emily and I are straddling the fence between really, really excited and a bit nervous. Oh, that's the bus. It's green. That's gotta be it, right? I am not straddling the line. I am full on nervous, borderline anxious. We have never done a physical challenge like this difficult before and I think I'm just really worried about whether or not I can do it. Oh, I'm scared. Hola. Hola. All right team, finally we made it after this long ride. So this is the Glass Cabanas. And we're going to get off here and then we will show to you the accommodations, the rooms. Hi, it's like proper alpaca. I can't wait to turn the light off tonight and hopefully we can see the Milky Way. Tomorrow the wake up time is going to be 420 for everybody. Alright? We are the alarms, we come room by room, telling you good morning, wake up, okay, sleep well, and we will see you tomorrow. Say Team Baby Alpaca and everybody else to Machu Picchu. All right, <laughs> to Machu Picchu. All right, and three, Team Baby Alpaca. To Machu Picchu. It is beautiful. The sky is like this perfect blue, and all the clouds are wisping past. They were like this perfect pink this morning. It's a great start to the day. I'm still really nervous, but now that we're going. It doesn't feel like this big scary thing. Like I'm just focusing on getting to Hamante Lake, and then I'll focus on the rest. <laughs> if we, can, if I can, everybody else can do it as well. All right, Tim. Not only is today the hardest and longest day out of all the five days on this trek, but if all goes to plan, we'll be able to say that we crossed through the Salcante Pass, which is a pass on the second highest mountain in Cusco. We started today at our accommodation in Soray Pampa at 3,900 meters elevation, and we are climbing some more. So today is 18 kilometers. We go up to Hamante Lake, back down, and then through the Salcante Pass, which is gonna be, I think, the toughest bit. It's gonna be freezing cold up there as well. Oh, I'm freezing. They told us all to bring beanies, gloves, and like bandanas and stuff. <laughs> gave us some mountain lion pee. Apparently it helps with the altitude. <laughs> it smelled like alcohol. <laughs> this cloud cover came out of nowhere. I wonder if it's hiding in the cloud. Yeah, you can't see how steep it is. Yeah, I can just imagine that after that it's all flat. <laughs> it isn't. 
Since I died already. BMA, positive mental attitude all the way. I think we're reaching the lake. Emily. Emily, Emily sorry, sorry, sorry. That's all right. We did, it. Emily, we did it. We made it. Wow. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. First challenge of the day done. We've made it. We're having, everyone's having a break and something to eat. Pretty good spot for a picnic yeah. though. Because we camped so close, we got to hike really early, and we are here completely by ourselves. All other Salcante trekkers actually start this morning in Cusco with that three hour drive. They still have to wake up at 4.30, but they don't get here for like another couple of hours. Basically, our packer deliberately plans their schedule so that we are the only ones places. Like literally, it's just our group at Humante Lake right now. That's so special. Now it's back down the mountain to then go back up a different way. It's about a kilometer of elevation altogether today, mm -hmm. which is the highest we've ever done. You gotta be confident. Not. I, <laughs> reach out. I respect them too much to be confident. Yes, I do. We made it down in like 20 minutes. Not even. We're waiting for the rest of the group and we keep going straight away. Even more difficult through this pass. No. You could get a horse, but everyone's saying no. There's some alpacas behind us and we just learned alpacas have a smaller head, llamas have a bigger one. That's how you know the difference. Alpaca, llama. <laughs> it's hard to do. He does it so easy. Alpaca, llama. That's where we're going, that massive path that goes into the distance of nowhere. Strategically kept walking when everyone stopped so I could say, I'm in first place baby. We're trying coca leaves for the first time and they say it's like a magic leaf that's gonna give us energy. There's all caffeine, alkaline, all the good things, calcium to get us up this mountain. You wrap in the middle like a bit of stevia to make it sweet. Now we're gonna chop this in our mouth, chew it for about 10 seconds, then no more chewing. Then you add some more leaves in and then you're, we're gonna conquer this mountain in no time. It's very dry. <laughs> okay. Half of my mouth is tingly from the cocoa leaves. Apparently that's normal. I'm pooped, but really proud that we've made it this far. I think there's like an hour-ish maybe till lunch. We're doing it, still in high spirits, still loving it. The views are amazing. My knees are killing, my toes are sore, but I'm happy. On this trek, 
the porters and the helpers run ahead and they set up tents and everything for us to have lunch in. So you kind of treat it like royalty a little bit. I think we can see a green tent. And green is our color. Like me, you might be wondering where we go to the bathroom on this trek because it's all day long. Turns out when we stop for lunch, there's a little toilet set up for us. We have a lovely tent for some privacy. It's like a composty style toilet. We have a garbage bag for our toilet paper. What else do you need? Come on, good job. Good. <laughs> As you can see, there's pico already on the table. And this is pumpkin soup. Lunch was great. It's nuts that they bring that all up here and can cook all of that for, just for us. Potato, fried trout, corn. Now we have another hour hike to the highest point on this whole five day trek, the Salcate Pass. And then downhill. And down. Yes. Sexy baby of Parkas. We made it. Wow, we did it. Oh, I'm freezing. The hardest point of the entire five days. Checked off. Yeah, so early. Now it's like nothing too crazy. I can't believe we're just surrounded in mist and fog right now and it is hailing so much. BMA! Oh my god. Oh, I love oh my god. <laughs> Alright, Team Baby Lamas! One, two, three! To camp. One hour left of our first day of hiking. Really, I feel quite accomplished that we actually got through it without much hassle. My toes are really sore though. That's camp, baby. Cannot wait to get some dinner and get inside our tents. We've made it to camp. I thought I'd set up these confessionals at the end of every night, just to give a little bit more of an insight of how we're feeling. Today was tough, but honestly, I think we did that thing where we built it up in our head to make it seem like it was really, really hard. And it's just one foot in front of the other, and we got there. Emily actually walked through the gates first. <laughs> Emily Dean, first through the gates. On day one, the hardest day. The only downside we had today was the weather when we got to the actual Salcante Pass, the highest point on this whole trek. It was snowing and it was windy, but we made the most of it. Everyone's very wholesome here. I think we got really lucky with a really good group. Hi, cutie. Day one, the hardest day. I think it's no secret how anxious and nervous I was. I think in reality I was giving myself like a 50% chance of making it. It just seemed like this monumental huge thing that I wasn't sure I could physically do. But Jordan was amazing and encouraging me. We have an awesome group who's like cheering each other on and high-fiving. I have blisters all over my feet, sore knees, but we did it. All of that's just a very earnest way of saying I'm tired, but I'm happy we did it. The end. This is home for the night. <laughs> Tonight's accommodation is a tent. We decided to upgrade and we have like air mattresses, which is adding like an inch of comfort, which I'm very happy we did. Yeah. I'm so tired. I don't know whether they planned this on purpose or if it's a coincidence, but having the tent night, like arguably one of the uncomfortable nights right after the longest day is probably really good because everyone's going to sleep no matter what. <laughs> I'm so tired. <sighs> Luckily, we also have like proper sleeping bags, liners. I'm wearing all my thermals. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Big walk. We did the hardest day. It's like 30,000 steps, 17 Ks, and over a K in elevation. Over a kilometer of elevation. It's 5 a.m. I like waking up with snowy mountains in front of us and horses next to us. This morning we were woken up by our normal coca tea, which was amazing, and gathered together in the breakfast hall for breakfast. And that was also pretty amazing. 
Today is technically the longest day, so where yesterday was long and hard, today is long and not necessarily super hard, it's mostly downhill. But one really cool thing is last night it was raining for like six hours at our campsite. That means the people who are going past Salcante Pass today, there's going to be like that much snow because at that elevation it snowed for six hours yesterday. <laughs> so lucky we came yesterday. So lucky. <laughs> We get the view of the beautiful snowy mountains now though, which is a very big positive. And we gotta go. <laughs> we are walking the 20 kilometers more or less downhill, but we're finishing at a hobbit's hut, which is interesting in itself. So really excited for today. Baby alpacas! <laughs> Had a quick break, had some snacks, met some puppies, and now we've all got the ponchos on because it looks like it's gonna rain. So this day of the trip, we knew it was gonna be a little bit rainy and a little bit muddy, but we also knew it was through the cloud forest. And we've only done one other cloud forest before and that was in Ecuador. And we are literally equal with the clouds and they're moving so fast. It's pretty treacherous, so when animals are coming the other way, we all have to move to the mountainside and wait single file. Taking on and off layers so much today. Just had a slight uphill and everyone's taking everything off. I'm sure when it goes downhill again, we'll, we'll put it back on. That's how you know a bridge is safe when you have to go one at a time. Wow. up our waters, picked up some flowers, three and a half hours till camp. How you doing? Miso? Some pretty intense downhill. Emily's knees are playing up. So, I have one bad knee and considering that we fell off a scooter in Thailand and I lost a chunk out of one knee, you would think it would be that one, but that's actually my good knee. <laughs> so going downhill, is hurting. I'm thankful I have the poles though because I do think it's making a difference. Got into a part of the trail that splits into two and one option is like an hour and a half up and down up and down up and down. The other one is a shortcut and it should take 45 minutes and given that my knee is playing up and it's not so nice we decided to keep going on the Salcante trek. <laughs> We're going the long way baby. PMA baby. Turns out the ups are brutal. <sighs> the uphill was hard, but this is the reward. Really good views. And a lot of downhill now. Not only is this route that we've decided to take longer than the other half of our group has taken, but we've just learned about all these wild strawberries that are growing on the side of the path. So every five seconds we're all stopping to grab a handful, wash them off and eat them as we continue the hike. I think it's going to take longer than an hour and a half. Look at the size of this one. Today's snack we got this fruit that's kind of like a passion fruit but apparently sweet. One of the, well, one of the reasons we ended up picking alpaca because there's obviously lots of companies you can do the Salcante trek with is their sustainability. Oops. 
And I think we've always cared about dogs and animals and like this last month and going to the Amazon, that's really changed into caring about sustainability and traveling sustainably. Oh, it looks funky. And alpaca takes their sustainability like pretty seriously. So much so that even though this is obviously organic and natural, it will take too long to degrade out in nature. So this waste we're gonna take with us. Ice cream. That's awesome. It literally tastes like passion fruit, but sweet. Just guys being dudes trying to throw rocks into the river. <laughs> trying to get a celebration on camera. Oh, Someone's got to get it in. I mean, this is the entrance to our hobbit houses for tonight, which I'm so excited to see. I'm so excited to, to take these shoes off. Apparently we've done over like 35,000 steps today already. Ah, that's day two in the books. I feel like spirits were high today, so that's good. It was the longest day today, and honestly the morning, it started really well. We were all like walking together, it was very wholesome, everyone's chatting and stuff. After lunch, I think, Everyone started to notice their legs were a bit sore and everything. I only started feeling my feet and my knees right at the last stretch. My knee is killing me. You know the sound that gravel makes when you step over it? That's what my knee feels like when I'm walking now. So that's probably super healthy. Tonight we're treated to the Hobbit houses, hot showers, toilets and a jacuzzi. But We've just realized that we didn't bring towels and I don't know how getting out of the hot water in this weather would be. So, still debating whether or not to go in. I'm so happy that we're doing something like this, that we're physically able to. It all starts with the attitude. And I know this isn't like some crazy physical challenge that we're doing and there's people out there like Ned Brockman or the hardest skis are doing these crazy things. But this did seem quite the challenge to me and the fact that we're already two days down I'm just really proud of that. We are situated in such a nice area though. There's like a rapid flowing river right in front of us and obviously surrounded by some of the tallest mountains we've ever been in. All right. On the verge of like a panic attack. Worth it. We made it to Machu Picchu. Celebrate, celebrate. Celebratory. Fuck, I said it. Celebratory this, you see it? Yep. <clears throat> Nothing came out. You a bit warmer? Yeah, I'm slowly warming up. Having my hands in my pockets helps. Thank you. I ruined my glove. <laughs> so it's more of a useless mitten now. I'm so <laughs> Welcome to 30. <laughs> Can't wait to have a beer tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. 